I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we live and learn, and we honour their leaders past, present and emerging. Deputy Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, members of the council, staff of the university, family and friends of graduates, and most importantly, graduates. Thank you to the School of Law and Justice for inviting me to be the graduate speaker tonight. And my most heartfelt congratulations to every one of you here who's graduating this evening. As you've already been told tonight, your presence at this ceremony is a testament to your determination and your resilience. Your presence here means that you probably studied for your degree through the pandemic, which, if any of you are like me, was a challenging and an isolating time. But it was also a time that this university proved to us all that it stood for something. It wasn't rankings. It wasn't just research grants. It was something uncommon, something intangible. It was compassion. And whenever we needed it, it was there. It was tailored to each of us. It was tailored to the uncertainty that had arrived in our lives and the fragilities that now framed them. Now, way back in 1997, when I first enrolled at this university in a law degree, things didn't always feel like they were tailored or ready-made to our challenges. The due dates for your assessments were rarely flexible. If you felt too fragile to sit an exam, then you failed it. And I know this to be true because I failed them. I failed them more than once. And whilst I negotiated for more compassionate outcomes, it never really seemed to impress my lecturers. And yet everything back then that I could see appeared impressive. The McMullen Building was the handsome and stately home of the law school. It looked and felt, it even smelt like a law school. Its hallways lined with honorary portraits. Its offices were empanelled with bookcases and filled with the aromas of scholarship, that yellowy, papery sweet smell that only a room full of old books can embody. And it all felt very elevated it felt prestigious. And at the age of 18, I thought these were the things that mattered most. I thought that a big wooden desk symbolised significance, which I'm sure in many places it still probably does. Then as you slowly get wiser, or in my case, very slowly get wiser, you realise that your education is not just about prestige. It's not really about the desk that it qualifies you to sit behind. The degree, as you've already been told tonight, is also about the people that make it possible. Now, as many of you in this cohort will know, there aren't many portraits or old books around the law school anymore. It's very much all about the new space now. Tourists take photos of it. It's a landmark. It's certainly elevated, but in a different kind of way. Yet what those photos can't ever capture are the things that really keep that place upright. They're impressive and they're certainly distinctive, but they have nothing to do with architecture. What you can't see from the exterior are the people on the inside, your lecturers, their commitment not just to their own scholarship and development, but also to yours. On my journey, their support meant holding me up when I was just holding on. And I promise you all, there were many times that I was just holding on. Uh, there were times, times that I was homeless. There were times that I was grieving, times that I was in legal trouble, times that I was in poverty and felt hopeless. Although I was somehow determined to keep going, it was the compassion of this university that nurtured that determination. So to all of you who've so rightfully earned your place here tonight, I want to invite you, as you already have been this evening, to think about the people who have helped you to get here. Of course, they're not just your lecturers, they're your family, your partners, your friends, and in their own unheralded way, I'm sure they've all been your lights in the dark, your torches of encouragement. 
For me, that light nearly arrived, arrived nine years ago. It was 2015. I'd already started and fallen short of finishing my law degree six times. I was bewildered. I was broke. I was exhausted. I had absolutely no idea how I was going to get over the line. But inspiration has a peculiar way of finding you when you need it most. And that inspiration is sitting in front of me here tonight. Lou, I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for you. Soon after my daughter Lucy was born, I enrolled in a law degree at this university for the seventh and the final time. And now I'm up here. So to my kind, my clever, my compassionate and beautiful little Lucy, thank you for being my torch of encouragement. Once you're old enough to climb up onto my shoulders, darling, it wasn't possible for me to look back. Thank you. Congratulations to you all.